Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Video Projection Mapping R371. And um, today I am going to teach you a little bit about video feedback loops. So this is a really old school kind of video art, um, video installation thing. It's people have been doing feedback loops since the 70s. You've probably heard a feedback loop on a microphone where like a mic is too close to a speaker and then you get this like crazy feedback loop that leads to like the, the sound that you have to like cover up with your ears because you get all this feedback. It's basically an electronic signal that gets looped into itself over and over and each time it gets amplified a little more and a little more until you either pop the speakers, you overload it, whatever happens. <clears throat> In this case, we're going to do it light and a video signal, so it's kind of cool. And it's very akin to facing two mirrors next to each other and then seeing how it repeats the image if you happen to step in between those two mirrors you'll see yourself repeated into infinity well the same thing happens if i have a projector and i connect the camera to the projector but then i point the camera at the image that the projector is imaging you could do this on a tv too just by having a tv and a camera and the camera's plugged into the tv so you see whatever's coming through the camera and then you point the camera at the tv you're going to get this repeat image of the tv screen over and over and over into infinity and it can do some really cool things with light effects and make these like blobs of swirling light that can kind of respond to movement and motion so i'm going to show you how this works i'll step between the camera so you can kind of see what it looks like and hopefully this is just another kind of just introductory way to start playing with light video installation a little performative if you want to call it that um and just kind of fun and it doesn't involve a computer so let's just review kind of the basic setup here this is a really old like mini dv camera i've had forever it doesn't even like really record video anymore but it still will take a live signal through it you can find these at thrift stores half the time for like 10 15 bucks this one's a little nicer it has a very sensitive sensor in it and it has um what's called a um it's it has what's called i'm sorry just wanted to check the audio on that it has um shutter and uh aperture kind of ex, um settings on it manual settings so it has some exposure ability so i can really kind of play with the intensity and quality of the light a bit uh and it had a little plug on the side similar to the projector right so this kind of like connects and at the other end of this cable You'll see there's three old school RCAs. You don't have to use an old school camera like this. It's just one that I had readily available. So with the video, you usually have a yellow one, which is the video signal, and then red and white, which are the audio signals. We don't need the audio. So we're really only connecting the, the yellow, which is the video. That goes down and connects to that old school analog input that I showed you guys that goes with the projectors that I gave you. Plug that into the back, right? So very simple setup, video signal out of here, plugs into there and let's see what happens so i'm gonna go ahead and turn on my pico it's going to project on the back wall here give it a second to come on and then i'm also going to turn on my camera let's give it a second here it had the signal there a second ago let's see what's going on make sure i didn't unplug anything Oh, it wasn't on camera. I think that was the problem. Or not. Let's see. So if you don't get a signal, this is always some good troubleshooting. Go to your input sources. And so you might be on digital, and obviously it's not going to get a signal on digital because there's nothing plugged into the, um, into the HDMI right now. So then I go to the settings again. And I'm going to go down to where it says source and I'm going to choose the RCA on the right and let's see if that works. Well, it was working a second ago. Why are you not working now? Let's see if that does anything. When in doubt, they're right next to each other. I'm going to try to this was working about two minutes ago, but obviously it wants to be difficult now. So let's try it again. I'll just have a longer cable there. Really? Oh, I hadn't pushed the cable all the way in on the back of the projector. So that's why it wasn't working. So we get to witness a little troubleshooting. You already saw kind of a crazy image just appeared, right? So if I put my hand in there, 
there goes my hand kind of repeating off into infinity. If I move it, you can kind of see the repeated forms, right? So just right off the bat, if I zoom out a little bit, we'll see a little bit more. You can see how the zoom will affect that. And now if I step in between here, you're going to see a repeated version of myself. See my arms kind of cascading and repeating. So you can get some really kind of fun, you know, very psychedelic looking sort of imagery. But what's cool is if you have a camera, like I said, where you can play around with some of its light sensitivity, so I can zoom in and out. I can, um, I have to put it back in this other camera mode. Give it a second. There we go. I can actually play around with exposure on this camera. There we go. And you can see I can make it like brighter, more intense light. I'll bring it to that up a little bit. And then I can also put something called light balance, which will actually change the kind of color tone of the whole thing. So I can do indoor light or outdoor light. So you can hook this up to a DSLR as well, as long as you have an output, like if you have an HDMI output, great, because it'll be a higher resolution. If you have an old school RCA like this, you can do it as well. And then I can get all sorts of neat things. And sometimes just like zooming into the light itself is kind of fun. And then even like, again, kind of like panning and tilting the camera. And then on this one, I also have um, shutter speed as well, if I can get to it. There we go. It doesn't want to. Oh, there we go. Let's get shutter speed. If I slow down my shutter speed, I can get even more sensitivity to it. But also kind of like bring some animation to it. I can get kind of like a little stutter to it. And what's really fun is if you kind of add some light into the scene, sometimes you can get a little burst of light. I'll actually try my flashlight on my phone. That lamp really didn't give it a whole lot, but sometimes adding a little bit of light to the scene. Well, this one isn't being as sensitive just because of the daylight in the room, but you can get some really neat effects and you can start to kind of like zoom into the light and play with the pulsing of it. And sometimes you can get these little like patterns to start to appear. Let me see if I can get, there we go. It's starting to throb a little bit with some light. If you go too much, it'll disappear. See if I can get it there. There we go. Now we're starting to get something. So it's really just kind of a fun one that you can play with and you can start to, it's really fun to have people kind of participate in it. Like I said, you can even twist them and twirl them so that you have something like this happening. Now we're getting kind of like a spiral little definition into it. And again, the minute I start to bring my hand in, you can see how it starts to flow and add all kind of motion into it. So depending on how you're documenting the process, you can create some really neat effects. So very old school, very kind of, you know, fun little way to play with video and light. But I always love to show folks some of these more, um, like I said, analog ways to play with light and to expose it in different ways and to, uh, again, play with kind of the speed of it and see what happens. I think that's a, there we go. That was a little home. I, I adjusted the white balance manually on that. So, you know, I'm just kind of playing around with something. There we go. I'm getting the aperture. Oh, too much. So it takes a bit of experimentation, but when you do get it in a good spot, you can really start to get some fun little things. And in a darker room than this, we can start to get the, oh, I lost my signal there for a second. Sorry, guys. In a darker room than this, you can get some sensitivity that will happen that will really allow you to um, get some fun effects. All right, so very basic setup. There. Oh, there it goes, it's back again. Took the camera a second there to reset that time. Let's get that down a little bit.
So I hope you'll think about playing around with some video feedback loops. I'll post some other resources out there and some links to some projects as well in this same um, module. Um, but just know, you know, if you've got some old cameras laying around, have some fun with it. Try plugging it into your projector. See what happens. Even if uh, you don't want to do the projector, try your TV. You can get some really neat effects. All right, that's it for now. Have fun.